through some of our issues, but the fact that you guys come to us and um, most people don't have that. So I'm really grateful about that. The other thing when it came to um, 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 some Senator Harvey says, um, talking about the veterans and, um, and all that, we don't have Medicaid expansion in um, the state of Georgia, so we don't have a lot of um, um, you know, hospitals are closing and all that, and so I don't know if there's a bill of, well, I think the only way we're going to get it is to, um, and we're, this is our Democratic contingent here, is to get a Democratic governor. And um, so I want to um, sort of open up to what we can do as citizens to push for having um, Medicaid dollars coming, um, you know, um, coming back to our um, state keeping these hospitals open. So you don't, if you have sickle cell, I mean, you don't have to go to Atlanta. We have, um, you know, um, my mom has dementia, you know, and so we, we don't have to go to certain places. And my question, if there is a question here, is yeah, that I'm going to get to that part. <laughs> 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 how can we, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm grateful that you're here, but how can we help you when it comes to these particular um, um, issues? Um, sort of grease the wheel. You're gone for 40 days every year getting this getting this stuff done for us. Is there a newsletter or um, or a way that we can make sure that that we're just getting our our, our news gear? Um, it's important. I'm, I first I want to just say thank you that you're here. <laughs> I really want to, to let you know that what you're saying to us has sort of lit a fire under us in Columbus. And we want to make sure that we are getting, um, I want to make sure that we're able to just, just um, get our information back to you. Okay. And, um, you know, without you always having to come to us. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Connors, yeah. um, for everyone, uh, the Medicaid expansion bill that the Democratic Caucus has introduced is House Bill 669. Uh, we, it was House Bill 188 last time, but, but we have a new bill, it's House Bill 669. And uh, what you're saying is so very important because the match is one dollar plus a dollar will bring in nine federal dollars. So it, it doesn't make economic sense for us not to. But that is that needs to be on our uh, agenda. Um, so when you come and advocate for other things, ask people about how it feels. Six sixty nine. Six sixty nine is is the bill. Good information. And uh, the Medicaid expansion is something that we've been, all of us have advocated Absolutely. over the years. And uh, the other amount that you mentioned was transit. And uh, all of these bills here supported uh, House Bill 170. Uh, we're very active in it. And uh, uh, that, that was for the first time that we had ever put money in transit for, 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 for uh, Mara or any other transit system in, 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 in the history of Georgia. Absolutely. So with that in mind, we did it on a bond, and it was for most capital expenditure advancement. But now we're trying to find in this session and an alternative funding mechanism what we do it every year. The last time was a bond issue. It may be a bond issue this time, I'm not sure. But but we are we are very cognizant of the fact that transit and public transportation is a major economic development issue. So we're going to continue. We got to we heard y'all comments and we're going to or in that effort, uh, I, 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 I'm going to be signed to be on transit when it's introduced next week. Hopefully, we'll have it ready. And uh, the transit is a major, major issue. Anybody else want to Medicaid expansion or transfer? Well, um, the Medicaid expansion is the answer for so many of the you know, health care issues that we're facing from rural hospital closures to keeping emergency rooms open emergency rooms open in some of our larger cities. Um, but there are a couple of other bills that are out there that are addressing um, medical issues. And one of them is one of our colleagues, the, uh, Richard Smith, who is the chair of the insurance committee. And I think you might want to take a look at his bill that's called Surprise Billing. Uh, I think that sometimes when People go to the doctor in the hospital and they get back home and they're feeling better. They get sick real quick when they get those bills that they didn't expect. Um, I think that is a bill worth looking at. I think it's got some good things that will take care of working families in Georgia. Uh, there was also a bill that will be dropped next week that I'm working on that a local physician called me about. There are some procedures that are paid for by government insurance plans like Medicare Medicaid. And 
they are listed with a, what they call a, a CPT code, and they've been in use by physicians, some of them, as long as 15 years, but private insurance will pay for it. So we are dropping a bill to say that if it's a governmental insurance, health insurance program to pay for it, and it has a code, then uh, private insurance should pay for it as well. And hopefully that will help some families not get a surprise bill and having to pay for a procedure because the, some of the insurance companies are claiming that it's a, an experimental procedure, but some of them have been around for 15 years and they are not experimental. Uh, we're trying to work on health care issues mainly with the Medicaid expansion because that's the biggest bang for the buck, so to speak. We can take care of people that are not insured and get them insured and get them a medical home so that they can get appropriate care. But there are other issues as well that we are also looking at, not only just at those of us here today, but the entire delegation. Well, I tell you, that health care has to be those of you, I just went from one of the issues that cost a lot. When I got my bill, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, was I surprised? <laughs> 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 so, I thought several doctors were going to get a hold, but I found out later they were official visits. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Official visits. Yeah. So, so health care is a major, major issue, especially if you don't have adequate health care insurance. It's major. Mm hmm. Yes, sir. Um, yes, I was reading about, and I, I don't know how possible it is here um, in in, uh, in Georgia, on cash bail reform um, and doing that at the state at the state level, um, unless that's already been addressed by any chance. Or I, I'm sorry, is that cash? cash bail? Yes, cash bail, money bail, um, and how? Uh, and I was reading how in New Jersey, um, in, in the state of New Jersey, they. Oh, Okay. Oh, can you hear hear me in the back? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, so basically, over in New Jersey, they repl um, they what they did was uh, change the um, uh, the conditions for uh, for bail away from like uh, from using money for like uh, to, for uh, for uh, for getting bailed out of uh, jail for pretrial um, uh, retainment of uh, of people accused of a nonviolent offense. Um, and since then, the twenty the pop the jail population in New Jersey has dropped to over twenty percent. Um, this has also been like uh, pushed for and legalized in Alaska. Oh, good night. Um, in Alaska, New Mexico, Kentucky, and a few other states. And there is a bill currently before the uh, the uh, the California legislature that would also do that as well. And so, like, I would I would. I was just wanting to uh, to ask about that because California seems to be on, also on the cutting edge of that uh, civil asset forfeiture form of um, uh, of doing so many things to like uh, to even move oh, like uh, a lot of felonies to misdemeanors too. And is that something that's also uh, being paid attention to, like by your Democratic caucus? Mm-hmm. Mm. And go back to work mm. or sitting in jail because they don't have the funds to pay. Right. right. Uh, and so, in some cases, they're saying it's similar to a debtor's prison because the person cannot pay the money mm -hmm. uh, out of jail. And mm -hmm. because they're saying they can do a good job and create all this stuff. Mm. Uh, so, I've, I've read about it and I know that there are several states that are working with that. Mm. Uh,
you plead guilty, you didn't have to go to jail and bail out. Why do you have to do that? He was already on the street. It seems like if you get penalized and they want to take your money, you have to go to court and bail out to contest it. And there's, like I said, again, there's no, no attorney, nothing that you can talk to if you feel the ticket was, was issued in an improper way. Well, I thought of this because of uh, your concerns. I, I think if we need to reach out to our security forces uh, to, to let them know of this concern, maybe they can have some way of controlling public transit or public citizens to learn how to best advocate for public health in that city. But that's another area that's an additional way mm -hmm. that's really out. I speak to that from personal experience, but I went down there, I wanted to contest it. The judge found me guilty. I tried to use the law, he wouldn't let me represent myself to speak because I had the uh, OCGAs right there, and I had a question. He wouldn't do it. Well, you can plead guilty going in and you have to pay a lot. I'm, you know, I'm boss. Nobody else going out there, they want not in it. Oh my gosh. It's not about innocence, sir, but it's about the question and about our rights. I agree, but that, 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 but I didn't do it innocent. I agree. I, 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 I agree with your constitutional right. But I think she had to she had to turn to the judge. Yes. We just don't have jurisdiction to have it. So we don't understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any proposals currently on the floor that would protect Georgia's environment and natural resources? Actually, the one of the best pieces of legislation for that is actually a tax bill that will come before the House probably this next week. A lot of people have been real concerned that for years we have been collecting funds when you go and buy new tires, you have to pay a tire disposal fee, and that money goes into a trust. That trust fund is then supposed to be used to clean up contaminated uh, landfills. Uh, so over the years, when the times got hard, some of those trust funds would be used for something other than cleanups. So this piece of legislation that will come before us is, is really been labeled the bill to put trust back in the trust fund. <laughs> <laughs>
not withdraw so much well water that it caused salt water intrusion, but when the storms and things happen, and so we're, we're going to have to look at that and keep working on that to get the money being looked at at the federal and state level to try to address that. The dunes have been severely damaged on St. Simon. There was a little spot of land at the end of the Sea Island they call the spit, because it's a little spit of land mm. they wanted to build on. A lot of us thought that that was taking a lot of risk to build out there because a storm could come along. Well, by golly, the storm came along and mm. some of the places that they wanted to build those houses are down. That land is no longer there. It's water instead of land. You know, you just get cancelled sometimes to say, I don't know. But the shoreline is very dynamic. <laughs> Can you describe 
what what you're saying, what is happening in the schools now? What would you like to see happen? I guess I would like to see perhaps, um, I, I just don't really see, I think in a lot of cases, several teachers may not be that familiar with, especially the Asperger's aspect of it, or if they are, they don't, I don't feel that they have enough training to actually deal with the students, and it really makes a difference. For example, the students with Asperger's, they don't normally think, and, and like you said, they don't normally think like the normal or the regular person does. They tend to take things, almost everything literally. So, but if a teacher, for example, who's teaching language arts, if a teacher doesn't know that, and, and then you're talking about figures of speech, well then that's going to have some bearing with that student, but that student is not going to be able to understand that. So it's very important that they understand. But don't they have IEPs? They, yeah, they do have IEPs, but then you also have students that are on 504 plans that follow, and they have Asperger's or whatever, so they don't necessarily have to have an IEP. So the teachers do need to be familiar with that. Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check on our education book. All right, thank you. It's a different education issue, but what about guns on campus? Keeping guns on campus. Yes, right? Yeah. In, in certain, certain areas. areas. So, it could be in certain areas. And uh, I can't tell you how this is, but I know the dome. Can't be in 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 the Administrative offices, private offices. Yeah. But like I work at the Student Health Center and I'm at the front. Oh. And I'm completely vulnerable. And they're not supposed to be in any classes. Where there are any students who are underage, because we have some high school students who are doing move on when ready, um, but it's up to the individuals to make themselves aware of whether or not there are any move on when readies in that class. So the responsibility lies with them, and I'm not sure what kind of checks there are on that. Um, and of course, if we have an underage student who comes in the health clinic, they're it's it's a mess. Well, back to the question about, about, about going to the court meetings, you know, because that's something that I mean, that's something that want to advocate. Because when you go, you know, you have to take care of something in a civic manner. Yes. People, I mean, they people are everywhere. What what kind of training? If you go and you want to carry a gun, whether right, you're a student or a citizen. Kind of, do they have to have training? Like, you know, I, I'm on the south side. I hear police shooting all the time yeah, yeah. at their shooting range. Yeah. Now you see the movies where they go through and they have the target. Yeah. That gives you the, the reflexes. Why? Why couldn't we just if someone presents something to where maybe in this community you have shooters, you have the other gun places, the shooting range, build something like that, and for you to have that gun and the permit. You maybe have to score Just a certain right. qualification and have re actual reaction. We agree with you. Yeah, some yeah, states have that. But, 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 you know, they would be the lobby to get it passed. We agree with you. Yes, but well, the lobbyists. Uh, uh, just, they just to fight us to the day. So we just keep, need to keep going and keep fighting. Oh, we need to start pushing it. The, the, the number one cause of self-inflicted injury by a gun is someone with a new gun trying to load it or clean it. Mm. So, yes, they need class. No, no issues. Maybe just have an obstacle course where you train. We agree with you on that. That is small. I think the training is very much needed. The hard sale. In celebration of Black History, history Month, it was mm -hmm. wonderful to see that there were 33 black congressmen uh, uh, honored uh, just the other day at the uh, House. Can you all speak to that? Because I think that's an amazing piece of history that uh, folks need to hear. Mm. That was uh, uh, 33 members of uh, yeah. African America that were expelled because of color of reconstruction. And the members here, we, uh, we have a statue on Capitol ground, uh, uh, a monument dedicated to those uh, that served. 
Mm. And I think uh, you know, the dinner in February, uh, the, 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 the theme will be honoring those 33 that were expelled. So we appreciate you bringing that up. Mm -hmm. And there's a book called Expel the Coast of Color. If you'd like a copy, I'd be happy to get it. Cool. I, I have some in my garage, too. I gave away when we went, but I have some left over. Yeah. Eighteen sixty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. So thirty-three. Wow. Yeah. Um. Oh. On the subject of Black History, I've um had the occasion on February first to go to the Black History Month in Washington D.C. and the along the road so 
so that there'll be a more, um, it's more of an exchange for purifying the air. And if there's mud off on the road from the oil and whatever from your car and it goes into the ditches, there's certain kinds of um, switch grass that cleans the water cleaner. And, and so they are doing all kinds from Noonan to Peachtree City. Hmm. They're trying to do all kinds of experiments with solar panels, renewable energy with the cars and electric cars and all of the plantings that go along the side of the road to try to make sure that it's a sustainable environment and a healthier. Uh, mm -hmm. that that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue that, that renewable because I was watching on the news this week. There was a city in Florida that's being built right now for like 20,000 people. It's all I think we should tell the 
Um, yes, uh, just just a few things. One, electric buses. Uh, I think that would also be good for like public transportation and sustainability. That intersects as well, and we have American companies that can do that. Like Proterra, they have a lot of videos on YouTube showing like co cities where they've been able to like um, sell their buses, and these are electric buses, completely 100% electric, um, renewable, and um, they you have them in Cal. They're based out in California as well. That would be something I think that Georgia could look at um, for like several cities, maybe Atlanta too. Um, maybe Columbus. Um, yes. In it's really what, what kind of buses that they get here is really local. We have local. Have right. None. None. Oh, gosh. Indeed. But of course, that's something that we're going to do. The only thing we do basically in Atlanta is funding. Right. Uh, and the only thing that we're constitutionally mandated to do is what? Establish a budget. Yes, sir. Everything budget. else is man made or woman made. Mm -hmm. Right. We decide to do is legislators. Mm hmm. Take a of life from the True. Indeed. Um, I was just going to say about the minimum wage. <laughs> I appreciate your consideration. <laughs> we talked about English only 20 years. 20 years. We, we, we did every year. This, this, this. Mm. And it's already in state law. We don't need to do it. Right. Please come to Scotty County. 
Yeah. We have a delegation. We work with a delegation. Right. We're not going to be there. Right. Oh. Right.